that's all right. <clears throat> right. Uh, half cut film reviews for August. Name Blinded by the Light. Did you see it? I did. Uh, one sentence summary. A young man discovers the music of Springsteen, then won't shut up about it. Oh, look, Charlie the dog. <laughs> Could you beat the villain? Uh, Jarvis' dad isn't a bad guy, uh, but he just wants to do what he thinks is best for his son. Um, but he is the antagonist, so I'd have to open up a can of war pass on him. Um, that's just the rules. And he's an older dude. He's uh, a larger dude. And he wears a uh, tie for the entire film, which is a classic Dick Cheney style street fight mistake. So there you go, It'd be fairly easy. Um, and taking the inspiration from Bruce Springsteen, I would blind him with a big light. And then he can't defend himself, can he? No! No! Anyway. Um, How do you improve the film? Uh, more Rob Ryden. Um, he, was, he was charming and lovely, as he always is. But in the uh, film, look at you, handsome dog. Um, in the film, his sons are, oh, my dad bullies me, just like your dad. And you never see really any kind of reasoning behind that. He gives him a bit of a tease when his son is acting like a knob, but that's about it. Um, what else? Uh, throughout the film, Javed and whoop, 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 son of the bullies. Anyway, yeah. They, um... <laughs> They're a bit culty with their, their uh, Springsteen obsession. So Roop recruits uh, Javed. And Javed becomes obsessed with the teachings of old Bruce. Doesn't he? Yeesh. Not Bruce the shark, by the way. Anyway, yeah. So Javed becomes obsessed with the teaching of Bruce. And he tries to recruit his love interest, his uh, dad, and like a whole market full of people. Yawn. So yeah, that's a bit weird. And then... You know, it's a film, it's like magical and blah, 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 blah. Then at the end, they do like a freeze frame. This is what happened to the real characters. And it says that the real Javed had seen uh, Springsteen over 150 times. And like, calm down, mate. All right, you're obviously, you're obsessed. Um, another question. Were raves in the daytime a thing in the 80s? And are they still a thing now? I don't know. Um, the whole film, Javid's mum gets dunked on, so she's like worked to the bone, she has to sell her jewellery. What are you looking at? Um, and you know, at the end, Javid wins an award, and then the first thing he does is like carry that. And it's not a heavy award, but it's still the like, she's not gonna get five minutes off. Oh, ooh, handsome, handsome dog. Anyway, um, there's a bit where, you know. There's a bit where Roop and Javed, they go to America and they get green screened in front of some locations and it looks faker than Christopher Reeve when he was flying through Metropolis. Um, that's that. And compare this film to Guardians of the Galaxy because even though there isn't a talking tree or Stan Lee in it, it, there's a hero who has a Walkman that he retreats into when the world is getting too tough. Um... There's one cassette in Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1, um, and there's at least two in this, but the music feels more recycled and reused in this one than it did in that, so there you go. Uh, this should have been called Born to Run, because on two occasions, Javed runs through town, uh, one of them in slow motion with his lady friend and Roop. Roop is a proper third wheel. Off you go, mate. Anyway, uh, he also runs away from some Nazis or skinheads, and on the subject of the skinheads... They don't get a comeuppance. Like, I would have would have been nice to see all of Javed's friends band together and say, "Boy, piss off, you Nazis!" But they don't, so I'm probably not what happened in real life. But there you go. <laughs> On the subject of the skinheads, there's a bit where Javed sneaks out from the day of his sister's wedding to go and buy Bruce Springsteen tickets, um, and the family on their way to the wedding, bump into some racists. Uh, and there's a bit of fisticuffs, and Javid's dad gets headbutted, um, even without being blinded by a big light. Uh, and then he's all like, oh no, is Javid okay? And then he realises that Javid isn't there, and there's all tension and stuff. Number one, what was Javid going to do, even if he was there? Like, he's not going to take on the entire bloody riot, was he? I missed where he was the security detail. Number two, I don't think he should lie to his parents. But instead of like, yeah, I, I shirked my responsibilities. I was out buying some tickets. 
and then the tickets get ripped up. So if he wasn't A, waving them in his dad's face when his dad's all emotional, and B, if he'd just gone, look, I got a bit of a dicky tummy, I um, I went to the loo, you lot all drove off without me, what's going on? Well, again, probably shouldn't like his parents. Um, we get to watch the film with the soundtrack, but like Javid probably looks mental, just talk singing his way through the town. Um, what happened to his job at the uh, school paper? What happened to his job at the actual paper? What happened to his job at the market? I don't really know. Rating out of five beers, three. Uh, got me in the feels a couple of times. You should always respect your parents. <laughs> respect them. <laughs> he knows, he gets it. Um, but like the music didn't really do it for me. I didn't really like it, but it's fine. Um, and someone should make a similar sort of thing with Bon Jovi. I'll do it. Or at least PJ and Duncan, which I've already written. Um, yeah, that's it. End. End of film. Review. Bye.